Hey, what's up, guys? This is Terry Shanahan from theshanahanplan.com and creator of the Paleo Transition. And today I want to share something that I've been getting asked all the time. I've probably been getting asked this for years, and I've been meaning to share it with you, but I've just never really got around to it, and today is the day. People always ask me, tell me what your, your typical day looks like. You know, what do you eat? And it's a question I get asked everywhere I go, and today I'm going to show you exactly what my typical day looks like and what some of my favorite meals are. So let's get into it right now. Um, I'll show you exactly, you know, kind of my routine with respect to food and, and drink and things like that. So the first thing that I do is I have a Kangen water filter um, in, in my house. And so it, it uh, ionizes, um, filters the water, cleans it up, and also can change the pH. Um, and so I use this um, on a daily basis, um, and it's really helped me be more conscious about hydration. So one of the things that people make a mistake about is not being hydrated, and sometimes they mix that up. The feeling of feeling dehydrated or needing more water, they might crave sweets or think they're hungry or, or, or whatever. But um, one of the great changes I've made in the last couple of years is just making a conscious effort to drink more water. So one of the first things I do right when I wake up is I make sure that I drink Probably within the first hour of waking, I drink about 32 ounces of water. I have a, a canteen that's 32 ounces, and I really try to make sure that I drink that quickly when I wake up, and especially over the first hour. So that's the first thing I do. And a lot of the things that I talk about, there's going to be recipes and more information about. And so inside the YouTube description, so if you're watching this video on YouTube, you can look below, and there's a bunch of uh, links that I've attached there for you to look at. And if you're watching this on my blog, make sure that you comment uh, below or that you ask any questions below in the comment section, and then I'd be happy to answer you. The second thing I do is I use Bulletproof Coffee. So um, I make sure I get hydrated, then I like to have my coffee. And um, I don't do the butter or the MCT oil or things like that. I do put a little bit of coconut oil in there, um, but I, I don't do a ton of fat. And um, just I don't do dairy, period. Um, I, don't, I don't react well to it. I've, if you follow my stuff, you know that I've had some autoimmune inflammatory problems, have a lot of food sensitivities. So I don't do the traditional bulletproof coffee with respect to putting a bunch of fat and, and butter in it. That works great for some people. I just can't do it. Um, but I use bulletproof coffee just because, one, I like the taste of it. It's very pure, and it's proven to be mycotoxin-free. So a lot of coffees have mold in them. The beans have mold. And those mycotoxins get ground up and we ingest them. And so that can cause a lot of health issues. There's a lot of people who think that they probably don't like coffee or they don't feel well when they drink coffee or they have like a major caffeine high and cra uh, spike and crash. And a lot of times it's actually because of the, the toxicity in the coffee because of the molds, not even just the caffeine. So in order to be safe and know that I'm getting mycotoxin-free coffee, I do use this. Again, you can check out a link below. You can get more information on this on this brand. There are, of course, other brands that are my mycotoxin-free. However, I do notice that there, there are some, some kinds of coffee, even companies like Starbucks. There's certain um, flavors or, or brews or, or kinds that I use that I feel fine with and others that I don't. And so for me, I notice that I, I just start feeling a little bit uh, tired or a little bit of brain fog. Um, get a weird taste in my mouth, sort of, if I'm if I'm getting um, some mycotoxins or eating even eating something that I'm a little bit sensitive to. So, um, cleaning up my coffee has been a big uh, step for me in the last year or two, and uh, I've really enjoyed this bulletproof coffee. So, um, I make coffee. I, I probably sip on you know 16 to 20 ounces throughout the entire morning. Um, I, I try not to have any more than that. All right. So, my all-time favorite. Uh, breakfast food is, of course, bacon. And so I probably have bacon several times a week in the morning. And again, you want to make sure that it's properly raised. So w one of the big things about animal proteins is, you know, there's a lot of fear about animal fat and animal proteins. But the reality is properly raised animals are completely different than animals that are not properly raised. The fat content's different. There's no hormones. There's no antibiotics used. And fat does bind toxins, and so if we're eating toxic animals, that's definitely not a good thing. But um, the meat that I eat, I'm, I'm very strict with. I want it to be, um, you know, pasture-raised pork, grass-fed beef, wild-caught fish, free-range chicken, things like that. So uh, bacon is definitely a staple. A lot of times, if I have bacon, I'll just have maybe like 
a third to a half a pound of bacon in the morning with some coffee. And then I, I really don't eat much until lunch. And so it's, it's kind of a high fat breakfast. Um, it's, it's almost fasting because it's not a lot of food. And then I'll have a really big lunch. Now there's other days like on a weekend or if I'm going to go on a, 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 you know, more of a, have a longer workout or go on a bike ride or something like that. I'll have a bigger breakfast because I, I need the fuel for that. And so one of my favorite breakfast options is a breakfast scramble. So I'll post the recipe below. It's, it's, it's a blog post from the past, but I'll post the recipe below for the breakfast scramble. But this is one of my all-time favorite breakfast meals. I am sensitive to eggs. I cannot eat eggs. So I make it like this without the eggs. But if, if you are an egg eater, you can definitely mix this all up with eggs, and it's an amazing uh, breakfast. This is a larger option. Again, it's 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 a good balance of, of uh, protein and carbs and fat. It's 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 probably lowish carb and higher fat, but there are some sweet potatoes in there, um, so that does give you a good whack of carbs. There's other uh, vegetables as well. Again, the breakfast scramble is another great option, and then this is one of my probably my third of of the top three breakfasts that I eat all the time. Um, kind of weird to people, but again, because I'm not allowed to have, I can't have eggs, it takes a lot of things out of the mix for me. So this is another larger breakfast option, and I have grass-fed beef, um, probably about a, a three-fourths of a pound, sometimes as much as a, as a, as a pound. Um, well, pr probably three-fourths of a pound is, is about what I normally have. And then I'll have um, an avocado sliced up on top, and then I'll slice up a bunch of red peppers or, or some other vegetable. But this is not your traditional breakfast, but for me, um, this is a really great big high-fat, high-protein breakfast that really lasts for me, and I, I feel very good throughout the morning. Okay, so this is my most common lunch meal, something I have almost every day during the week. I love it. It's super high-fat, and again, I just feel great when I have it. I'll post the recipe below, my favorite paleo salad. Um, mixed greens, I've got sliced up peppers in there, I've got avocado, I've got pistachios, blueberries. Also, um, I have chunks of coconut oil on top, and then I do a little bit of olive oil. So there's a lot of fat in there. And then usually I do chicken, um, sometimes I'll do salmon. Uh, my most frequent is I, I take pieces of um, chicken from a rotisserie chicken from Whole Foods, and um, you know the chicken's cold, I pull it off the, off the bone, when it's warm, put it in containers, and then I grab a handful of it and just put it on the salad. That's the easiest way for me for lunch. It's a quick thing you can put together. Um, again, at times I do have grass-fed beef or salmon or other type of meat with this salad. This is my favorite salad. You've got a lot of fat in there. You know, you've got your coconut oil, you've got a little bit of olive oil, you've got uh, pistachios um, and avocado. So you have four or five, you know, different types of fat in there. And again, you know, you have to find your sweet spot, what works for you. For me, I feel, look, perform my best when I'm eating a high-fat, lower-carb diet um, and, and my joints and a lot of other symptoms that I faced in the past with health issues um, also go away. So this is my all-time favorite lunch right here. Here's another great option, and again, you can check out the recipe below, but it's a salmon bowl. So this is like if I had a big breakfast – and, you know, I'm not too hungry. I just want a snack or a smaller lunch. This is a great option. This is uh, wild-caught salmon. There's some uh, pistachios, co um, coconut oil chunks, um, avocado, peppers, or other vegetables. This is sort of similar to the salad, but it's just without the lettuce and a little bit smaller meal. Um, and gen generally, I'll have salmon in there instead. It's kind of unique, something a little different, but definitely a good smaller meal option or a snack that you might like. You could also have this for breakfast, of course, if eggs were, were not an option. All right. Here's another great meal that I really, really like having. Um, sometimes I'll have this for lunch, but it's just my salmon and green beans. Um, I cook the green beans in coconut oil, and I use Barsari seasoning for the salmon. And, again, check out the links below. I can give you the exact recipes or exactly how to make this one of my favorite lunches. Okay. So, the salmon I also have for dinner, and and uh, usually if it's dinner, I'll have a large larger portion of it. But paleo masacholi is like one of my one of my all time favorite, really quick, easy dinners. And 
what it is is it's sort of like you know I call it paleo mozzarella because one day I was just craving Italian food and I you know I I'm really sensitive to gluten and I, I, there's just a lot of things I can't eat and if I do I really really pay for it so it's not even worth it for me so I was trying to figure out you know what could I eat that would be somewhat like that and I came up with this and so what you do again is you cook the green beans in coconut oil and then you make a meat sauce and you throw it right on top and eat it like a mozzarella of course the recipes below you can check it out but this is something that is really really good if you're craving kind of more of a hearty meal you want that you know traditional carb you know feeling or something to, to fill you up if you're craving that this is an awesome meal so this is my paleo mozzarella one of my favorite dinners okay this is like you know my my big time dinner like if i've had you know maybe on a saturday or sunday or you know if i've had a long day did a hard workout or something like that this is my all-time favorite go-to for a dinner and the vegetable option will definitely rotate, it's just some sort of green green vegetable. But I'll get a grass-fed steak, cook it on the on the on the grill or on the ovens um, in uh, barsari seasoning. Again, you can get a link to that below. And a Japanese sweet potatoes. These things are amazing. There's like a almost like a purple outside. I I just you know scrape the skin off, wash them, cut them up, and cook them in coconut oil probably my all-time favorite vegetable. I don't know if there's anything better. You know, so if you're looking for a starch option, definitely try Japanese sweet potatoes. They're they're amazing. And in this in this option, I think I had um some sautéed spinach and coconut oil. Um it what was the option, but again, you know, I'll change to different types of green vegetables, asparagus, green beans, broccoli, cauliflower, um, you know, any sort of green vegetable and just try to mix it up as, as often as possible. But this is like the ultimate paleo dinner right here. This will fill you up and, and, and you will be totally satisfied and love it. Okay, so of course, everybody, you know, goes through times when they have sweet cravings. And um, because I eat a pretty high fat diet and I've been doing this for a long time, I don't have horrible sweet cravings, but the, the, the average person who's kind of transitioning to this lifestyle might have sweet cravings from time to time. So one of the best things you can do is, is get kombucha. You can make it. There's different kinds. This is probably my favorite kind just because it's very accessible. You can get it at different stores. But kombucha is like a fermented tea. There's a lot of good bacteria in it. It's very good for your gut and for your digestion. So this is a great drink. It's a little fizzy. It's cold. Um, and it has a little bit of sweetness to it, although there's not too much sugar in it. So this is a great option to turn to if you're craving something, you're looking for a new drink, um, and you want to do something that's healthy. So kombucha is a, is a great option. Coffee, tea, and water are also you know your, your ideal cho choices. Um, you can look at using coconut water, potentially if you're an athlete, like after you train or after you compete. It does have natural sugars in it. So you want to be a little bit careful if weight loss is your goal. You probably don't want to, you know, consume it if weight loss is your goal because you don't want to just consume empty calories or, or, or sugar through drinks. You'd be better off, you know, using uh, food and taking sugar out of any drinks that you eat. But it's, it can be good for athletes. So those are kind of my, my, my paleo type drinks that I refer people to. Um, but kombucha is a great one that a lot of people really enjoy. Okay, so again, for those sweet cravings, sometimes in the afternoon or late morning or whatever, you know, you, you might be feeling a little bit hungry. Um, you might be craving something. So, you know, this is freshly ground almond butter. I got this one at Natural Grocers, um, but you can get it, you know, at a lot of health food stores. And, you know, you want to watch the consumption. You can definitely have too many nuts and seeds and fruit, um, especially if you're trying to lose weight. So I'll post a, a link to another article below about that. But almond butter is a pretty good option if you are, um, you know, looking to to have a quick little snack. I just take a little hand, a little spoonful of it, and just eat it right out of the right out of the jar, right off the spoon. And it's a good way to give yourself a little fat and to kind of crave, uh, get rid of those sugar cravings. Okay, so this again is not perfect. It's not healthy. It's not something that you should have a lot, but. Um, you know, you don't want to completely, completely um, restrict yourself from everything. There's going to be social occasions like a birthday party or a family get-together or something where everybody's going to be having dessert. and Maybe you want to have dessert. So 
this is like a non-dairy coconut based ice cream there's also no sugar added again it's not perfect okay so i'm not i'm not saying that this is great but it is organic it's non-gmo there's there's some good things about it it uses coconut milk so at least it's dairy free and gluten free and soy free so those are some good things and it's low sugar so i would highly recommend this as you know sort of a, a pretty good dessert option um, when you're transitioning to this lifestyle and you're trying to make progress. Um, this could be something that you, you take along with you or you have as a dessert, as a treat. Definitely something I have every once in a while if I'm going to uh, you know, a party or, or an event. Um, and then I'll even take some extra with me to, to introduce it to people and they're surprised at how good it actually tastes. All right, so this is probably your best bet if you're, you need a dessert or you're craving some, some sweetness or, or something. Dark chocolate, you want, you know, darker the better, um, but you want to get stuff where there's, you know, little or no sugar added. You want to get dairy-free. Um, if you can get organic and non-GMO, that's even better. Uh, this is one of my all-time favorite treats. I really, really, really like it. It's um, all natural. I, I get this one at Whole Foods. You can also order it online, um, but it's, it's dark chocolate with almonds and sea salt, and it tastes really, really good. It's a great treat. Again, not perfect, but it's better than a lot of things that are out there. So give it a try if, um, if, if you're looking for a paleo treat. Oh, I didn't know this slide was in here. This is what my trash can looks like at the end of a day when I'm having sweet cravings. Just kidding. This isn't really my trash can. I thought this was a funny photo, though. It snuck in here, and it was at a party where we were doing a, a, a paleo dinner, and you can see there's about 20 wrappers of dark chocolate and some coconut ice cream in there. So... Don't overdo it. You don't want your trash can to look like this, okay? These are treats, but they're better options when you're, you're you know, you're moving towards uh, this type of lifestyle and you're trying to make progress. So you're going to be better off having these things as treats or desserts than the traditional things that are full of processed sugar, gluten, and other things that you're probably, that are holding you back and that are causing you to gain weight and to not feel your best. So, all right, there you have it, you guys. There is sort of my typical meal, some of the meals I have on a daily basis. What are the things I like to do when I have sugar cravings or I want to have a treat, things like that. Those are the exact meals that I eat on a daily basis. And I think if you try them, you're really going to like them, and you're gonna, they're going to help you uh, progress and, and achieve the results that you deserve. So I want to thank you for checking out this video. And if you have any questions, make sure you comment below or you go to my blog and comment below this post. I'd be happy to answer your questions. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you get over to my website, theshanahanplan.com, and you sign up for a free Paleo Quick Start course. I think you're really going to like it. It's going to give you some steps on how to get started with this lifestyle today. Thanks, and we'll see you again with another video real soon.